Hi, this is John, VE6EY in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, doing a video to demonstrate some of the challenges I've been having with radio frequency interference, or RFI as it's called. And uh, boy, over the last few months I certainly learned a lot about RFI and, uh, <laughs> and managed to solve a particularly bad problem I had, so I wanted to share some of the things I learned and describe some of the tools and techniques that uh, that were used. Uh, so recently a new source of uh, RF noise showed up. Uh, it affected uh, most of my high frequency radio operations. I, I first noticed the uh, increased noise level on uh, the 20 meter ham band uh, where normally my noise is quite low and all of a sudden it became quite noticeable. And then I discovered wide bands of noise centered on a couple of frequencies, uh, 6 megahertz and 12 megahertz, and they had a distinct pattern. And uh, <coughs> I'll show you some of the uh, video and uh, examples of that. So this video is about the processes that I used to track down the problem and uh, the tools and techniques that I used. So some of the topics I'm going to cover today, first of all, um, understanding the normal when you're faced with an RFI problem, it's good to know what's normal at your location and what's not normal. So uh, there's some work you can do in sort of documenting your baseline noise situation. And uh, one thing I did learn that I'll talk about a lot today is switch mode power supplies. These little power cubes that are just about everywhere. And they are definitely part of the new normal. You'll find your house is full with noise from uh, SMPS. Second thing is checking the obvious, um, and uh, there's really three diagnostic approaches you can take when you find a new noise. The first is to uh, check for power line noise, which uh, is, uh, can come and go uh, at various times of the day or be there permanently. Uh, secondly, check your own house, and thirdly, once you've done those two, then it's time to go and meet the neighbors, so to speak. Some of the tools that I'll <coughs> talk about and show in use are uh, a portable radio with high frequency or wideband and used in AM mode. I have a little Grundig Yacht Boy. There's also a line noise meter or a line noise analyzer which uh, you can borrow or buy from MFJ. Directional loops. Uh, I built one and we'll talk about that and show it to you. Software to find radio is great for showing a spectrum of uh, the noise and what it looks like and what it sounds like and uh, my SDR is a Perseus. Also the audio spectrum is important when you're diagnosing noise. What kind of audio is coming out of your radio? And There's a piece of software you can download on the internet called Spectrum View which is a great little Fourier transform uh, uh, spectrum analyzer for audio and you can also use software called Virtual Audio Cable to connect uh, your software to your spectrum analyzer, um, uh, which you can't really do uh, unless you get into a lot of complicated stuff using audio plugs and so on, but virtual audio cable lets you ship audio between applications. Having remote access to your shack using streaming over the network is very useful for demonstrating audio in front of your neighbor, that audio or video that shows the, uh, the noise interference problem uh, remotely. And lastly, we'll talk about some of these phase reversal noise cancelers that are on the market, which I discovered are not only good for uh, reducing noise, but also good for diagnosing. So without further ado, here's a demonstration of the, uh, the noise that suddenly appeared at my location. And I'll show you an example of what the uh, 12 megahertz band looks like with the noise and without the noise. As you can tell, that noise was pretty severe, and it really, uh, really uh, tore things apart. Uh, so let's begin by talking about baselining and understanding your normal home conditions. 
So um, I'm lucky. I live in a relatively no low noise urban location. I'm located next to a park, so that cuts the number of neighbors I have in half. And I have underground power, uh, except for one power pole which ships uh, AC power across the park. So underground power distribution is pretty good for attenuating a lot of uh, power line noise. Secondly, I'm lucky to have external antennas which significantly reduce the RFI from inside your own home. Uh, quite frankly, if you are using indoor antennas, you have a real challenge. Uh, but as you can see, even using outdoor antennas is uh, challenging as well, as I have found. Here's a spectrum display of the noise at my house uh, from 0 to 20 megahertz on my normal tri-band beam antenna up about 50 feet in the sky. And as you can see, um, I do have a big chunk of noise around 3 megahertz. Um, and that's just over to the left, just above the broadcast band. I haven't tracked that one down yet. I don't use the lower frequencies, so I haven't worried about that. But that's next on my list. Beyond that, there's a fairly reasonably n low noise floor all across the spectrum. And you can see the peaks on this diagram from the shortwave broadcasters at 6 megahertz, uh, 9 to 10, around 12, around 13, the ham bands, and so on. So this is the noise at my house on what I would think of as a good day. My location, as I said, is next to a park. My house is at the end of a cul-de-sac. Uh, there's that one power pole a few hundred feet uh, from my house going across the park. And another benefit of this location is the park slopes down about 150 feet. So effectively, to the northwest all the way through the east, my antenna is quite high in terms of its effective height, and I get really good, uh, really good propagation to... Uh, places like uh, Asia, um, Europe, Middle East, and South Africa. So when this new noise arrived, uh, I used my Perseus to capture the uh, 0 to 20 uh, megahertz spectrum. And I mentioned that there were peaks in that noise around 6 megahertz and around 12 megahertz. And you can see how the noise floor in the upper graph increases compared to the lower graph at those frequencies. So this way, knowing what, what my normal noise was and what this new noise was, I was able to uh, pretty quickly know that something was wrong. Although, quite frankly, I could, <laughs> I could tell something was wrong just by, uh, <laughs> by turning the radio on. It was really quite a remarkable uh, noise that just obliterated everything in my house. So after understanding the normal, I then started to look at the noise signature. Uh, so what is the signature of this noise? Well, one thing I discovered, it's uh, got a really rich 120 hertz uh, audio uh, spectrum display, uh, as you can see. And I'll show you again shortly. There's lots of uh, spikes at 120 hertz and 60 hertz um, uh, harmonics. Also, this radio noise came in a well-defined spectrum, certain subbands around 6 and 12 megahertz. It wasn't all over everywhere, uh, and it did not extend up into the uh, VHF area as the um, uh, power line noise often does. It was relatively constant strength, which led me to believe it was coming from one, uh, one location, uh, and it was also independent of weather. didn't matter whether it was windy or rainy or anything like that. Okay, so the other thing I did was uh, keep a log uh, and uh, figured out that the uh, noise came and went relatively consistently. It came on in the morning around breakfast time and went off around bedtime. Uh, frequently it stayed on all day, uh, but sometimes went off for a while during midday. And it was variable enough in its start and stop that I knew it wasn't on a timer. My first thought was maybe the dreaded, uh, dreaded uh, um, plasma television somewhere in the neighborhood, but uh, those have a different sound and a different signature, which, uh, which led me to believe that was not the case. The audio noise spectrum, um, you can very easily hook your receiver audio in AM mode uh, up and take a look at a uh, FFT or, or Fourier analysis of the audio, and here you can see those um, those spikes that I was telling you about. Uh, this is very reminiscent also of power line noise. Whenever you see that 120 hertz and 60 hertz harmonics, you can pretty well decide this has got something to do with a power supply or your power line. There's that power pole that I talked about just across the street from my house. 
And I guess that's where I started. So I've had uh, arcing uh, previously on two occasions over the past 10 years from that power pole. I'm lucky my local utility, NMAX, is absolutely responsive, and uh, and they fixed it twice before, and they came out this time, and they said, no, it's not the power pole. So uh, I have a lot of uh, thanks to NMAX for the, uh, for the uh, service they provide. I also double-checked this myself with uh, Borrowed Line Noise Analyzer. This little MFJ unit tunes 135 megahertz. So, uh, and it's an AM receiver. The, the great thing about it is it's got a built-in dipole antenna, so it's very directional. But in walking around my neighborhood, I could tell that my noise was not coming in as a typical power line noise. Secondly, I went through the house, and uh, this can be a big job, uh, because your house is just full of many minor noise sources and occasionally major ones too. You can use the line analyzer, you can use a portable radio tuned to various frequencies. Every AC circuit in your house pretty well has its own noise signature and most of the noise comes from switch mode power supplies or compact fluorescent bulbs. Um, and uh, it's quite interesting. You can uh, you can actually just trace along your power lines and, uh, and know what the various noise signatures are um, inside your house from different equipment. And of course, if you found uh, something bad, you can just unplug it. And of course, the uh, the gold standard for figuring out if something is in your house or not is to turn off all the circuit breakers, which I did, and that did no good at all because the noise wasn't coming from inside my house. So after eliminating the power line and eliminating my own house, it was time to check the neighborhood. Um, the MFJ didn't help a lot uh, because my noise was in the HF bands while the MFJ is VHF, so that was no good. Uh, the portable radio could hear a lot of noise, but couldn't localize its source. Um, it's almost like the noise was getting into house wiring through conduction from whatever device was causing it and then just spreading outwards. The noise seemed to be coming from everywhere, quite frankly. So it was time to uh, build a direction-finding antenna. And uh, here's a short video which shows the direction-finding antenna. This is uh, my direction uh, finding tuned loop, uh, which um, when I say quick and dirty, I mean it. This was really cobbled together. <laughs> and actually it was quite funny because when I was walking around the uh, neighborhood direction finding, uh, a police sergeant pulled over <laughs> and said it's not every day he sees one uh, people wandering the neighborhood with a cross. So we had a good chat and a good laugh about that. Um, anyway, this loop uh, that was built, uh, I can use to tune from 2 to 20 megahertz, which is pretty well the complete lower end of the high frequency area. And it's tuned with a capacitor, and it has variable attenuation. It's really good for direction finding. You can peak the noise off the end of the loop, but what's really effective for direction finding is the null, uh, the broadside. So right now, if you're looking at this picture of the loop, straight towards you, there's a very good null, and it's, it's very sharp. Uh, you got to be careful though if you don't build the loop very carefully and make sure it's very uh, symmetrical then the the null will be skewed a little bit as was the case with this uh, quick and dirty loop that I built here's the schematic you've basically got two sections you've got the main loop which in my case was a 30 inch uh, square and uh, and then you've got a couple of capacitors um, you can find software on the internet very easily to uh, figure out the inductance of your loop and figure out which capacitors you need to tune it. The reason I have that pad capacitor switched in is I can then lower the resonant frequency so it gives me broader coverage. On the uh, on the output side basically there's a little pickup loop uh, which is next to the main loop and it's going through a variable attenuator circuit. This is not lab quality by any means 
but in a very typical 50 ohm environment this very simple attenuator will really do the job in terms of reducing the amount of signal picked up and that's very important because as you're further away from the source you want the most gain but as you get close to the house or whatever is causing your noise you want to reduce or attenuate the signal just so you can do a better job of, of direction finding. Here's a picture of the uh, the basics of the loop. I just used a little terminal strip. I built two different loops. One is a single turn loop and the other is a, a two turn loop. So using those jumpers I can select between a single or a three turn loop so I can vary the frequency uh, and so that's very useful. Uh, inside the little box is a variable capacitor for tuning as well as that little switch for the padding capacitor and then the variable resistor is there um, to provide the output. So it's pretty straightforward to build and uh, the pickup loop is just a little uh, smaller smaller loop uh, next to the main loop. In this case it was about 20% the size of the main loop. So walking around the neighborhood and looking rather foolish <laughs> uh, with my portable radio plugged in um, I tuned the loop and the radio to 12 megahertz and after about 10 minutes I found what I was pretty sure was the right house and uh, using the null and the attenuator I was actually pretty sure which side of the house or where in the house the noise was coming from. So I went and knocked on the door and uh, introduced myself and uh, found a way to explain what I was doing. Um, I left the loop at home because it was kind of uh, you know, kind of big and ugly. But once inside with the portable radio, it was overwhelmed by many different noises, just like at my own house. So that was just no good for uh, figuring out which was which because there was so much noise as we turned different things on and off, it didn't make a whole lot of difference. So I asked to come back that evening with my laptop so we could monitor uh, the noise. Uh, and I set up my laptop, as I'll show you in a minute, to uh, send the uh, radio signal from my shack at my house, which was a few hundred feet away, and uh, let the people see and, and hear the noise in their own home. And, uh, and that was quite interesting and quite a useful way of doing it. And success at last. So I made sure the network was available. I walked over with my laptop. We put it on the kitchen counter. They could see the noise and hear it. A whole bunch of squigglies on the screen like you saw earlier. And I said, let's just try turning a few things on and off and just see if the noise goes away. And within 30 seconds, we'd found the noise, and it was really dramatic. <laughs> yeah, uh, the halogen lights in the kitchen the cabinets. As soon as you turn the switch, the laptop showed a completely clear screen and a si silent sound and switch it back on and it came back. So it's likely a bad so-called transformer in the halogen uh, lights in the kitchen cabinets. Um, they call them transformers but they're not really. Uh, they're, um, they're actually AC to AC uh, switch mode uh, power supplies. So um, I didn't obviously take a video in the neighbor's house, uh, but I, I'd like to show you uh, how well this remote monitoring works. So here's a short clip of me with my laptop, and I found we have one halogen light in our uh, in our china cabinet. <laughs> for obvious reasons, it hasn't been turned on for 20 years, um, but it demonstrates pretty closely what we saw at the neighbor's house. And keep in mind that the uh, the laptop is not picking up the noise directly. The noise is coming from my ham radio station and being sent over the network to the laptop. So that's a pretty good demonstration and it's uh, something you can easily do in one form or another. Um, what I found was there's some alternatives uh, as to how you can demonstrate in your neighbor's home or even just within your own home uh, what's happening from your base station uh, with your antennas and radio. So uh, 
the more complicated way is what I did. I was lucky I had the right equipment for a r remote software to find radio that sends the audio and the spectrum. The Perseus is equipped to do that, so all I have to do is just connect to it over my uh, my Wi-Fi with the laptop. You can use Wi-Fi or mobile internet. Uh, do not try to use your neighbor's LAN uh, because most of these packages that you may use require port forwarding and that has to be set up on the router and that's just too confusing to impose on your neighbors but you can do the remote SDR you can do your remote ham radio if you've got the ability to remote it from your laptop and just listen to the audio or you can actually just take your radio and plug uh, the audio into your PC in the shack and there's different packages you can get that will allow you to stream the audio over the internet and a very low-tech way of doing the same thing is just to have a speakerphone with you and call home and have your spouse put the handset in front of the receiver speaker and send the audio notes. And that's pretty much as simple as it gets. Okay, so just before we end, here's some last words on these noise cancelers. Um, I use the ANC4, but uh, the MFJ1026 works about the same. They work great. The trick is finding the right noise antenna. Uh, to be able to find uh, the right quality of the noise you're trying to reject. And what these devices do is they just mix together the noise with the signal and noise uh, at 180 degrees out of phase and cancel it out. Um, useful for diagnostics as well as reduction. Um, and what I found is when I was using the uh, um, indoor antenna on the noise canceller, it didn't make much difference, but switching to an outdoor noise antenna uh, worked really well, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment, um, but it also helped me understand the noise was probably coming from outside the house. So here's a picture of the ANC4, and there's a spectrum display uh, around 12 megahertz of the solid uh, white line, which is um, without the noise cancellation, and then the gray line, which is with the noise cancellation. And, uh, and here's a short segment uh, showing just how darn effective uh, this ANC4 was at reducing the noise that I was facing. Just to wrap up, what did I learn from all of this? Uh, well, use a variety of tools and techniques. That's very useful to, to have a variety of different things you can do in a disciplined way to figure out your noise. Uh, direction finding loops really do work. <laughs> They're uh, easy to build and cheap. Obviously, um, what I built was both easy and cheap, and you can find enough information on the Internet to build them very uh, important to understand your normal, especially uh, as your house fills up with sw switch mode power supplies. And the uh, RFI from those power supplies can get conducted into your house uh, wiring and just spread a great distance. And you can, you can demonstrate that to yourself in your own house. Um, and, uh, and the same thing works uh, coming from neighbors. Uh, figure out the noise signature. This is really important. So I kept a log of the times, the weather, the frequency, the audio spectra, all this stuff I've shown you in the video. I even checked against noise signatures published by the ARRL. You can actually go to their website and they have audio of different kinds of noises and you can listen to those or watch it on a spectrum scope uh, on your computer and uh, and just get some ideas as to what your noise might or might not be. I've been talking here mostly about switch mode power supply noise, but there are other kinds of noises. So lastly, thanks for watching. If I can answer any questions, send me an email. I'm glad to have this one problem fixed up. I'm sure it's now time to go after the next one. Thank you.